your case will be set for trial in approximately three to four weeks. The maximum penalty you can receive for a conviction on a first degree misdemeanor, such as a charge of battery, violation of injunction, stalking, or resisting arrest without violence, is one year in jail and a thousand dollar fine. The maximum penalty for a second degree misdemeanor, such as a charge of assault, culpable negligence, or criminal mischief, is 60 days in jail and a five hundred dollar fine. There is also a minimum sentence for conviction of a domestic violence crime. It is 12 months of probation with domestic violence counseling, evaluation and treatment for substance abuse and mental health problems if necessary, and court costs. As a defendant in this country, you have constitutional rights, including the right to plead not guilty, the right to a trial by judge or jury, the right to remain silent, the right to a speedy trial, the right to have the state prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt the right to confront and cross-examine the state's witnesses, the right to put on a defense, and the right to an appeal to a higher court if you are convicted after trial. I am now going to give you some specific information about one of the three alternatives which will likely be happening in your case today. One alternative which may be offered to you today is the pretrial diversion program. Generally, pretrial diversion is offered only to those of you who have no prior criminal record. Only the assistant state attorney, not the court, can offer you pretrial diversion. Here's an outline of how it works. The assistant state attorney will announce the specific conditions of the pretrial diversion program which is being offered to you when your case is called. In most cases, there will be a requirement that you complete the domestic violence assessment and treatment program, which consists of 26 weeks of group counseling about domestic violence. However, after your first appointment, which is called an assessment, you may be given less classes depending on your circumstances. There may also be a requirement of substance abuse treatment, mental health treatment, parenting classes, community service hours, or payment of restitution. If there is a stay away order in your case, you are not allowed to have any type of contact with the victim. If there is a modified stay away order, there may be contact, but there may be no violence or threats of violence. Any violation of either the stay away order, violence, threats of violence, use of illegal drugs, possession of weapons, or rearrest are prohibited and would be reason to revoke you from the pretrial diversion program. The domestic violence counseling groups meet, meet once a week for about an hour and a half. 
There are day, evening, and weekend appointments available. Several locations are offered, and groups are available in English, Spanish, and Creole. If you agree to enter the pretrial diversion program, you will not be admitting or denying your guilt. You will sign the forms here in court and then report to the advocate offices by no later than 4 o'clock p.m. tomorrow or on Monday if today is a Friday. They will interview you and enroll you in the program closest to your home, which fits in with your schedule. If you successfully complete the program, pay the required fees and do not get rearrested, the state guarantees they will drop the charges and you will have no criminal record from this case. After the charges are dropped, you may be eligible to have the record of your arrest sealed. This is the only offer you will be given to resolve your case with no criminal record. There is a charge for the pretrial diversion program. At your evaluation appointment, which will be scheduled after your report, you must pay an assessment fee of between $20 or $50. The fee is determined by your income and you should bring $50 with you to the advocate office at the time of your assessment appointment. There will be a charge for each counseling session. This counseling fee is set on a sliding scale depending upon your income. The amount of the counseling charge will be a minimum of $5 per class. When you report to the advocate program to sign up, you must bring proof of your income, such as paycheck stubs, tax returns, or a letter signed by the person who supports you if you are unemployed, so that they can determine the cost of your program based upon your income. Many of you were released from jail to pretrial services program and are required to report and sign in once a week. If you accept the pretrial diversion program today, you no longer need to report to pretrial services. However, if your case will be going to trial, you must continue to report to pretrial services until the case is over. If you enter the pretrial diversion program, you will come back to court at least twice so the court can check your progress and compliance in the program. On those dates, a progress report will be given to the judge about your attendance, attitude, and cooperation in the groups. A criminal records check will also be performed to make sure you have not been rearrested, and contact will be made with the victim to make sure there has been no abuse or contact if none is allowed. If you accept the pretrial diversion program, you are giving up your right to a speedy trial. The right to a speedy trial in general terms means that your case must go to trial within 90 days from the date of your arrest, provided you are continuously available and ready for trial. To summarize, if you are offered and successfully complete the pretrial diversion program and pay all costs associated with it, the charges will be dropped and there will not be any trial. If you do not complete the program for any reason, your case will be put back on the calendar and set for trial. A second alternative for your case is the state of Florida may announce that they are seeking jail if you are convicted. If you cannot afford a lawyer, I will speak with you about appointing the public defender. If the public defender was already appointed to represent you at the bond hearing or is appointed today, you will be given a court order requiring you to make a payment of $40 within the next seven days. You can pay at the clerk's office on the way out, you can come back and pay, or you may now end the payment. If you are convicted or plead guilty or no contest, you will also be responsible for additional public defender charges. You will also be receiving information directly from the public defender in court today about how to schedule a meeting with them so they can prepare to represent you at the trial. If the state seeks a jail sentence and does not offer you pretrial diversion, your attorney will enter a plea of not guilty and your case will be set for trial. You will need to continue reporting to pretrial services weekly until your case is resolved. The third alternative that may happen in your case today is that the state of Florida may certify no jail in your case. If this happens, it means that the state is not going to seek any additional jail sentence in your case. They will be reserving the right to seek probation, fines, counseling, community service hours, or any other sanction except jail. A certification of no jail means you will not be eligible for the public defender and you must hire your own lawyer or be prepared to represent yourself at trial. If your case is not resolved with pretrial diversion, you must enter a plea to the charges. You may plead guilty, no contest, or not guilty. If you ple plead guilty or no contest, the court will sentence you today. If you plead not guilty, your case will be set for trial in approximately three to four weeks. The state will provide you with information about your case called discovery, and in turn, you will be required to provide the state with certain information. You will receive notice of your trial date in the mail. Make sure the court file has your correct address. 
One other very important matter is that if you do not hire your own lawyer, you must come to court every time you receive a notice. Sometimes the notices say attorneys only. However, since you will be representing yourself if you don't hire your own lawyer, you must be present at every hearing, even if the notices say attorneys only. Make sure the court always has a current address for you. If you change your address at any time during this case, you must notify the clerk of the court in writing of your new address. Keep a copy of the letter for your records. Always include your case number on anything you file with the court. The court will send notices to the last address which appears in the court file. If you fail to appear in court at any time or come late to court, a bench warrant will issue for your arrest. All of the defendants on this calendar have been charged with the crime of domestic violence. Domestic violence affects all members of the family, but has an especially serious impact on children. For this reason, the court offers free counseling to children who have witnessed domestic violence. If you believe that your child could benefit from this counseling, please let the judge know when your case is called.